And hello, everyone, and welcome to the Indiana Arts Homecoming. My name is Bridget, and I am the Director of Marketing and Communications with the Indiana Arts Commission. I am so pleased to welcome you to this creative warm up How to Cook with Tuning Forks with Clockwork Jones. We're so happy to have them here today. Before I turn it over to Clockwork, I'm just going to go over a few things. Please. Um, remain on mute during the presentation until the Q&A portion so that we can give our full and undivided attention to clockwork. And also feel free to use, utilize the chat function to introduce yourself, do some reactions, and add questions throughout the session. If you'd like to rename yourself in Zoom, you can do that by hovering over your image and clicking the three dots and then selecting rename. Also, I'm gonna drop in the chat here in a second, the link that Clockwork sent us earlier today um, that he'd like us to have playing while he's, he's doing his thing. They're doing their thing, apologies. And so we are off and running. I'm gonna stop my screen share and I'm gonna drop that link. Clockwork, take us away. Thank you very much, Bridget. And thank you everybody for joining us here with uh, cooking with tuning forks. We're gonna make some apple flapjacks here. Uh, if you could put this background music on, this musical landscape as I am doing, uh, to set our mood here. I got it in my ear. Hope y'all have it in your ear. I'm gonna flip around to, to sort of a point of view camera situation. You can see what's going on with the kitchen here. So we are going to cook some bacon here with these apple flapjacks. And as you'll see, I have all of my mise en place out. This wouldn't be a cooking show if we had to see me measure everything. That would take way more than 20 minutes, which are a lot of time today. So I found my wonderful gas stove with some pre-measured butter pats. Ooh, get this butter nice and melty. As you see on the recipe, we are going to melt this butter and then toss our chopped apples in. We have about oh, a nice knife, cheeky sound. Just a couple minutes here while our butter melts. Slice, slice, slice our apples. The wonderful, wonderful thing about cooking is that it is really full sensory. Beautiful red color on a vibrant gala apple here. The sounds. Be quiet to hear this. So pleasing. I wish y'all were here to enjoy the smells with me. I smell my butter starting to melt. I better go be attentive. Smells as well. Just, oh my gosh. It's just. So fresh, bringing in the fall time, which I know we all love. Here the butter is ready. So we are gonna to toss these apples in our butter fat. We're not gonna cook the apples right now. We are merely tossing them in some fat. What's that going to do? It's going to coat Beautiful apple pieces for our five pets. A protective layer so they will not brown too quickly. As we mix them in, that will allow them to fully caramelize without the sugars seeping out when we put this dish together. I'm going to put in my ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon. Again, this is a cooking show, <laughs> all pre measured out. Apples are coated in butter. The music is sufficing for some sort of smell of vision. We'll get this lighthearted <laughs> with down home feel. We're gonna give a shake of salt in this because even sweet things taste better with a little salt seasoning 
opens up our saliva glands, salivate. We only taste through the medium of saliva. It's all science. It's all science. So I'm going to mix my apple buttermilk first. First, we're going to get a cup of milky milk, whole milk, full fat. Just about a third of a cup of this wonderful seasonal apple cider. We're gonna mix in this vanilla extract and almond extract. Get some nice cherry nuts and then almond extract. And what that apple cider vinegar is going to do in this mix is it's going to curdle we don't need to keep buttermilk in the house if we have vinegar and milk. And that acid base is going to activate, well, the acid is going to activate the base reaction of leavening and make it even bubblier, fluffier. Again, this is all science. Pre-measured flour. Oh. Let's get the rest of it out. Mm -hmm. Leavening, baking powder, baking soda. Brown sugar and white sugar. Give it some sweet, help it uh, stick together. Yum, yum. And as I've said, we don't want to overmix this flour. We're going to produce too much gluten, which is fine. And bread, gluten is the amazing protein component that bonds our bread together. We don't want chewy pancakes. We want fluffy, delicate, and cakes for our flapjacks. So we have our teams together. What I'm gonna do, and bacon. This is Indiana. <laughs> and I, like many of you here in Indiana, was raised decidedly on pork. So let's stick true to that root. Is it even a breakfast? Is it even a lunch? We've got a daily serving of pork. We're gonna render this fat, we're gonna fry our flapjacks in this. So let's turn that up just a little bit for now. This is amazing. Okay. We're gonna see, we're gonna pour. Oh, what a pouring sound. Our apples. Our beaten egg. Mm. I'm gonna mix this slowly, gently. And if you're in the same part of the track that I am, the music is slowed down as well. Isn't that amazing? Can we hear that? Oh, the bacon sizzling. Oh, I love it. There's always so much going on. And we're in the kitchen, so slowly, gently. Those of you following along with the recipe, we're about to wait for 20 minutes, right? We don't got that time. <laughs> so what happens next in the cooking show? We use our time machines. No, I have this prepped, of course, but look. We see oh, the baking powder, baking soda activate. We see bubbles in there. What? The buttermilk is reacting to our base. I'm going to keep that there, actually. We'll look at the difference here. This. And 
the batter I made a half hour ago. Look how all the flour ooh, has absorbed the moisture. It's thick, it stands on itself. Amazing. It's a little more liquidy, a little more watery. If we kept on, kept on beating it, eventually it would absorb, we'd get rid of those lumps, but then we would produce too much gluten. The solution is patience. As we see here, our batter has done a wonderful job of gluing itself together. With time and patience. We're gonna flip our bacon. Y'all wish you were here. I wish next year. Next year. So good. I'm very happy for the present. But also excited. Put you on the screen. We're going to add a flapjack right over there. Ooh. This one. Over there on that bacon rendered. Ooh. I want to let it steam, but I also want to watch it. Let the next one steam. And you see it's spreading out just a little bit. Oh my God. Smell that wonderful sizzle. Mm. Mm. We're going to sit down and eat a flapjack here in a second. I hope y'all have some food to eat as well. If not, you're just going to have to imagine <laughs> we're listening and seeing how good this for this. But I hope you all have something to eat too. If you could in the chat, I want you to think about what food needs as an everyday celebration. Um, growing up, flapjacks were that. They were a little everyday celebration. Not, not every day, but it wasn't a super particularly amazing situation needed. It wasn't a, a birthday situation needed, just when we flipped it, oh yes. It wasn't a huge celebration. Everybody's feeling good. It was a Saturday morning kind of thing. What are little celebrations we can get out of food? Put those in the chat. I want to discuss those here in just a minute. Oh, we have these flapjacks cooking. Let's do a little more butter here. Oh my gosh. Yes. And another. Is there a special breakfast, a special lunch, or a special restaurant? It doesn't have to be homemade food. Not if the family cooks. What was that? How fluffy that is. Oh my goodness. Everyday celebrations through food. Good meal is the best part of a lot of people's days. It's the best part of my day a lot of times. <laughs> it's the best. It's the little ways that most of our ancestors expressed their love for one another through art. If food wasn't also about creativity, we would all just eat, you know, nutritional pellets. <laughs> I don't want to live in that future. I hope that doesn't happen. But we have spices and seasonings and we've curated so many different methods of cooking to go past just preserving food. Food is absolutely and wonderful pure form of folk art that many of our ancestors celebrated. It steamed just a little bit. That's 
I'll be all right. Let's sit down a little and talk about some food ways. So if you have it yet in the chat, please put what are some everyday celebrations y'all have through food ways? <laughs> Is it a special meal? Is there a special breakfast you remember from growing up? Maybe on Saturdays. That was usually what. Flapjacks and pancakes would have been growing up. Ooh. Is it a special place you went to with the food? Grandmother's mashed potatoes. And a great example, a lot of these celebratory dishes take a little more time, right? That's the whole point of it. You have people around, maybe it's a special time of year, you have extra hands. Or maybe, when again, this is a little more time for a celebration. A lot of these celebratory dishes we get from, from that very thing, the logistics around food creation. Oh, breakfast for dinner, I love it. That was always your favorite for dinner. Oh. Um, if you want, you can come off the chat and, and talk about it. <laughs> Since we're all just eating here now, it's totally fine. If you prefer, you can stay with your cameras off in the chat, but if you want to speak it out, that's fine too. Ah. Hmm? Clean out the fridge pizza. <laughs> How wonderful. And I bet that would create memories of everything else you ate for the past couple weeks, months, I would imagine that soup we forgot about, that steak we forgot about, put it on the pizza. I love it. It's like a, mm, like a summary. I love it. Does anybody want one? Can I <laughs> drop it in the chat? I'm not putting any toppings on these. They are sweet enough. I could. I'm not a huge, huge sweet person, which is why I like them. They'd be great with some really good butter, like really good butter. Um, tulip tree creamery in Indy is amazing. They make the best butter, but these have enough apple and sugar. They taste kind of like muffins and how good just how they are. Yes. Sunday morning pancakes, absolutely. Everybody had the time to sit down and eat together. That's really what pancakes kind of mean to me. These little food celebrations, these ways that just make every day just a little 
a little better. There's a lot of ritual and meditation around this. You gather things, mix it up together. It's just, hmm. <laughs> a lot of very specific pancake memories. I love it. I had friends sleep over would spell out each kid's name using pancakes. Yes, they are malleable, which is just amazing. Hmm. Is anybody else eating lunch right now? Or is it just me? Because um, that's really the thing I miss from this conference. <laughs> One of the many things I miss is just getting to know people over shared food experiences. It's kind of the impetus for this session. Yes, I have a cat. I clean the kitchen very well before cooking. <laughs> but he crept in to ensure that there's no cat here. It's also a fire truck, as I am uh, cooking from home here. There is no uh, kitchen in my office. Hmm. What is everybody else eating? Hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm getting jealous. <laughs> I mean, pancakes are fine, but they're not poblano and roasted garlic, brown rice, green beans, Brussels sprouts, and chipotle chicken. That sounds amazing. Um, maybe you should have run this session. <laughs> Donna, that sounds amazing. Could you drop that recipe in the chat? Hmm. Mm. Korean short ribs. Mm. Anybody have any food pictures to drop in the chat? This wonderful meals we have. If folks don't want to understand eating on Zoom is kind of weird. <laughs> Sometimes I'm leaning into it. But food pictures are always appreciated. Portia, is that pizza cold or hot? I don't usually heat my pizza up. Okay. Is pizza a sandwich? I think it's a sandwich. It's the debate I've had a lot of pizza loving friends. It is an open faced sandwich. It is bread and sauce and cheese. Pizza is a sandwich. Yes, and pancakes are just bread. I, I practiced this recipe yesterday and I use it as a bread. It works as well. Pizza is a sandwich. <laughs> Hot dogs a sandwich. Anything that has bread and sauce and toppings is a sandwich. Right, exactly. Think of the calzone example. Oh, well, I guess it depends on the kind of pizza. Like Chicago style pizza is uh, down near a casserole. That's closer to lasagna than it is a sandwich, but Certainly the New York style pizza, you even, even fold it, you even fold it. It's a sandwich to make that, that yes, like a, like a uh, pita or a kebab. Not a kebab, a shawarma. <laughs> it's a sandwich. Maybe, I don't know. Seems like a sandwich to me. And if I were to take one of these pancakes and put the bacon on the inside, that would be a sandwich.
So adding this other access point, this other element, is kind of what this project is all about. Um, tuning forks. We have this music that is integrated specifically with things we eat. So we have uh, intentional things to hear, intentional things to eat, intentional things to smell, all kind of connecting back to that same food memory, which for this particular dish, these apple flapjacks was a recipe my mom made growing up, particularly this time of year when apples are, are plentiful. Um, as, as that special Saturday treat a lot of times. And then we would clean the house. <laughs> it was a way to incentivize uh, chores as well. But uh, I hope you all enjoy it and um, got that same sort of, sort of whimsical feeling from that as I've enjoyed spending this time with you. I know I have clockwork. I mean, this has been such a cool way to start the day. I wasn't sure what to expect and I'm not disappointed at all. So thank you, thank you. so much for sharing your recipe with us, for sharing that audio. It was just like, so Zen. I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. else felt like that too, but I was just like, so relaxed, uh, mm -hmm. watching you cook and listening. And, um, I'm curious before I send everyone out to their next breakout session of the day, where can we find you? What are you up to? How can we support? Yes. So um, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Clockwork Jones Music. Um, and you can keep up on my uh, latest project, Tunic Forks, which is this mixture of food and music. I've um, got a couple gigs lined up for plated dinners where you can hear original music composed with original menus. Um, so look at uh, Clockwork Jones Music to uh, find out. Thank you for asking. Awesome. All right, everyone. I just dropped in the chat, the link to SCED to go join your first breakout session of this Thursday of homecoming. We started it off great. Tell everyone in the session that you joined that they just missed something really special. And <laughs> that next year when we're in person, we all need to come to breakfast with clockwork. I am super excited. Um, yeah, and definitely like Paige said, go follow clockwork. Go follow clockwork and then join your session. I think that needs to be the uh the the instructions here well thank you so so much for joining us uh this morning this early afternoon and everyone have a great rest of your day and enjoy all that homecoming has to offer take care thank you